Hi, today I want to talk about e-beam lithography, which is using an electron microscope to not only image tiny things, but to make the tiny things too. I actually shot this video a few weeks ago when I was home, but I'm back at school now, so it's just going to be a voiceover. Electron beam lithography is really amazing, and it's used in industry to make features down to 5 nanometers and below. A normal electron microscope scans a focused beam of electrons over a sample, and to put it very simply, detects what bounces back. And this is able to image things much smaller than optical microscopes because of the wavelength of an electron being so small compared to that of light. But in e-beam lithography, you're using the same exact hardware, but in reverse. So instead of imaging it, we're making the sample. And we use the uh, scan coils within the microscope to control the beam and kind of draw with it in X and Y and create the sample that we'd like to make. So the first thing we need to actually do this is control of the beam in X and Y. So the back of my microscope has these uh, connections on it for um, an external scan controller and you can give it plus or minus 10 volts on the X and Y connections and it will um, deflect the beam to its maximum deflection. It's got a third one which is a s external scan enable. I don't have the connector for this so I just soldered these BNCs onto it. Next up I had to build the computer controller or a computer interface for this so I used two 12-bit DACs which turned out not to be quite enough. They had a current output, so there's a trans-impedance amplifier, which gives a plus or minus 10 volts uh, output to drive the microscope. And that's driven by a CPLD and an Arduino with a USB connection to PC. Now that we can control the beam, it comes the interesting problem of turning it on and off. So if you were to draw this with like pen and paper, this would be the equivalent of being able to draw something very fine and detailed without ever lifting your pen off the paper. So it's like an etch-a-sketch. So useful, but not great. So typically they use a beam blanker, and this can be electrostatic or magnetic. So it's either some plates or some uh, electromagnets that are placed inside of the electron um, column. So when you put a voltage or current to these, it will either highly defocus the beam or just deflect it way off to the side or, or um, pinch it off. So it effectively um, turns off the sample from impinging or turns off the beam from impinging onto the sample. Mine didn't work out perfectly, but it's at least a proof of concept, so I'll show you what I started to do, and I'll improve more on this, hopefully, when I'm back for winter break, maybe. I started by making a high voltage power supply because I was going to go with the electrostatic method. So I built this little box here, it's got two ranges, it can output 0 to 90 volts or 0 to 4 kV. And it's got one BNC on the back that goes to the PC scan controller to uh, turn the HP power supply on and off. All of that was pretty good, the electronics could have been a little faster, but this was where the real problem came, was my hardware. So I just bent up this really bad piece of wire and kind of stuck it in the chamber um, right above the sample. So this is really far from ideal. Normally these beam blankers are way up in the column rather than in the sample chamber. This was definitely just a quick proof of concept, but the idea is that the beam passes through the um, ring I bent in that copper wire. And when I apply a high positive voltage to it, the negatively charged electron beam is, def is uh, attracted to this copper wire, so it's highly defocused, and um, there's no longer a focus point to expose the resist. It works pretty well, as you can see here. I've obtained an image on the microscope, and I can adjust the high voltage on this beam blanker. The image will go in and out, and the measured current on the sample will go up and down. Here's a look at the back of my microscope. I keep adding little boxes and detectors and amplifiers for all these projects, and it's getting really out of hand. I mean, it's a total mess back here. Definitely a fire hazard. I counted for fun. There's about 45 outlets uh, um, chained together on the same circuit. So we're ready to go. Uh, after getting a good vacuum on the microscope, I'll go over and break apart a silicon wafer so I can clean it with standard stuff like acetone and alcohol and then we'll apply a photoresist in a minute here that will be exposed on the microscope. So while I'm cleaning it, uh, I'll talk for a second about the resist. Normally there's specialized resists that are sensitive to the electron beam wavelengths. Because photoresist is commonly only sensitive to ultraviolet, but I couldn't get my hands on any of these special e-beam resists. So I started messing around and I didn't expect anything to come out of it, but there's a very common resist called SU8 and um, it's mainly used for UV, of course. But I had a little bit of it laying around, and I just, um, I heard some stories about it being used, I think in Germany in like the 80s, 
um, exposed with uh, x-ray source. So this is similar wavelength, I guess, to e-beam. And I said, uh, might as well give it a try. So I put some on the wafer, stuck it in the microscope, and was amazed with the first results. So this SU-8 is sensitive uh, to a lot of wavelengths, um, about 400 nanometers and below as far as UV, and then apparently e-beam as well. And I don't have the right developer either, so this was kind of uh, also in that crazy why not, it's worth a try attempt. I exposed it, or I developed it rather, with acetone, which should never work, but uh, it actually turns out if you squirt it really quickly with acetone, the developing takes one or two seconds, and uh, it's pretty repeatable actually. So our sample's ready to go. I'll mount it on this brass um, sample pedestal for my microscope. Uh, pop it on with some double-sided conductive tape and screw it into this little stub holder. Same method as putting it in the microscope as in my previous videos. There's like a airlock, load lock area that uh, gets inserted in first, pumped down, and there's a valve that opens between that and then it's pushed into the actual sample chamber. So the view you'll see in a minute is kind of hard to get. I gotta position the camera right. But what you're seeing right now is the sample on the bottom is being raised up. The uh, coil in the middle is the beam blanker and the thing on the top is the pole piece. That's where the electron beam emerges from. Turn on the electronics. Start with the scan controller and then the high voltage power supply box. And after that we'll obtain an image normally with the microscope. And then we have to adjust the probe current, so you have to do some experiments getting this match to um, get the exposure right. So I'll adjust that to get the right emission current that I want, about 0.03 microamps. And then we'll enable the external scan control, turn the lights off for uh, added dramatic effect, and then we can start making things. Right now the uh, images are exported from Inkscape and then converted to G-code and sent over to the Arduino via GRBL where they're buffered and sent to the CPLD. Eventually the CPLD or FPGA will have USB directly, you'll be able to send over the whole program, it'll be buffered in memory and sent over at very high bandwidth to the microscope. But that's version 2. Now I've got to develop it. Like I said before, we're going to be using acetone, which is not ideal, but I found it actually works okay. I'll put it in a dish and um, get my chemicals ready. Because the development time is so short, just a few seconds, I have to have uh, some water ready um, right away so I can wash it off and stop the etch time. And um, you should use DI water or uh, distilled water. So let's put some acetone on, wait, and quickly wash it off. It's a very scientific process, as you can see. Next up we'll inspect it, so I'll throw it in a microscope. The most convenient one was just this wafer prober, so turn the light up and put it in there. So I'll end the video by showing pictures of some stuff I've made. I haven't had that much time to mess with this and obviously there's a lot of room for improvement. The beam linker is only partially working. You can see these lines like strings connecting everything. You can also see all these dots within that bear when you zoom in, and um, that's because the 12-bit DAC I chose is not quite enough, and it is a digital scan controller. So that's all for this video. Uh, I'll probably make some more on this topic, but I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.